Hi, so regular viewers of the channel are going to know I love Stirling engines, and you can make them. But sometimes, if you don't have the tools, obviously, it can be a bit challenging to make them, but you can buy them. This is a low temperature, uh, different Stirling engine I got from Amazon. It's about 30 quid. I paid a little bit more because if you get the cheaper ones, they, they can be a bit badly built and difficult to get to work. These rather nicely built ones work really, really easily. And they're advertised as working from the heat of a coffee cup. So here's a nice steaming cup of joe. We pop that on and give it a few minutes and we give that a flip and that will begin to work. Now, building a Stirling engine is an experience in itself and a lot of fun. But a lot of times you just want to experiment with it to see what you can do with it. Because of course we've been doing some interesting stuff on heating and cooling using the sun and different approaches like with plant pots and plastic and all kinds of things. And it does make you think immediately, if you're doing a, a plant pot cooler, could you run a Stirling engine from it? And of course what that then means is you have to build a Stirling engine to test that idea. And sometimes you just don't want to do that. You want to test the idea. Or maybe, like I say, you want to test the idea, but you don't have the tools to build a Stirling. Well, you can test the idea easy enough by buying yourself a Stirling engine. And there she goes. Anyway, buying yourself a Stirling engine and you can see the principles of the Stirling engine really very clearly. Now this is a gamma type, so what it does is shuttles the air between the hot and the cold side, gives it a bit of time to heat, expand, push the piston, gives it a bit of time to cool, contract, pull the piston back down again. So you can learn a lot just from these things and just from having one that you can then experiment with to run your own experiments. Obviously the greater the temporal difference, the stronger that will run. Okay, it's called a thermal difference engine because it works on a thermal difference and it does not matter which side is hot and which side is cold. When we had it on the cup, this was the hot side and this was cold because it was in ambient, but equally we can swap that around. We could put this side on something cold and leave that side in the ambient and it would still work as long as there's a temperature difference. And of course, that immediately, may, or immediately makes me think of the evaporative, evaporative cooler that we just made in the previous video. In theory, if we sit that on the cooler in the sunshine, the sun will heat this bit, the cooler will evaporate and cool this bit, and we should, fingers crossed, be able to get this to work. Now to make my evaporative cooler, I'm gonna do a really simple one. I'm gonna take a bit of oasis and soak it in water. So it's a water reservoir. I'm gonna stick some black cloth on there. Because the sun will hit the black cloth and of course the black will absorb the sun. It will evaporate more quickly and that should get colder. Then we'll just stick that on top so we can leave that wet oasis with that just in the sun and it should work. Okay, let's face it, that was awesome! It was a five degree difference between the hot and the cold side. So this really is quite a good low thermal difference engine. Five degrees is not very much. Of course, there's not a lot of power coming out of that because it's only a five degree difference. And the more the temperature difference, the better Stirling engines are. You can use a Stirling engine and a soggy cloth and run that engine. You run that engine, it means you can generate. Now, Stirlings are often compared to internal combustion engines, and believe it or not, up to a certain power, as a power to weight ratio, they are in fact uh, competitive. 
It's above a certain power that they lose their competitiveness. But this I would compare more directly with something like a Peltier device. Peltier devices aren't renowned for their efficiency. The Stirling engine is a Carnot engine, so it's going to be around about 30-35% efficient. And then we stick a generator on, it's going to be about 95% efficient. So let's say we've got about a 30% efficiency there. That's pretty awesome for both Peltiers and solar. So I enjoyed that. I thought it was cool to show, pun not intended, to show you that an evaporative cooler in the sunshine can in fact run a Stirling. And if it can run a Stirling, it can generate. So, we've done a test. We obviously need to have a think about that and see what other kind of designs. Because equally, it doesn't matter which is hot or cold. It also doesn't matter if it's upside down or not. So if we point out in the sun, we should be able to get it to work. There was a slight irritation with this, is um, this crank isn't made to be upside down. It will drop off. It's only meant to be that way around so that it, we can stay on. And so we're going to do something with the crank. But I thought I'd show you the evaporative cooler. Obviously it works. If you fancy giving it a go, then really you don't need a massive tool set. Get one of these, buy some floral foam, stick some black cloth on it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.